Hi guys, in today's video I want to talk about progressing your mobility training. Now, yesterday I dropped a video on my Patreon which uh, one of the subscribers asked for in terms of mobility for boxing. And one of the things I mentioned in this was the importance of loaded mobility and being able to sneak this kind of loaded work into your warm-up. One, because it's time efficient. Two, because when you add strength at length, i.e. loaded mobility, then it sticks around longer term because you're actually loading your muscles and you're teaching your brain that it's okay to put yourself in certain positions. Whereas stuff like foam rolling and stretching, although it's useful and it can calm the nervous system down temporarily, doesn't tend to lead to long-term changes and you find that you have to input a hell of a lot more time in order to do this. So what do I mean by progressing your mobility? Well, first thing, make sure you're tracking it in some way, shape or form. Uh, I used to train with a good friend of mine and he would mark the uh, dowel rods so when he was doing his overhead squats with them or some shoulder rotations he could try and get his this um, grip width of his hands narrower each time requiring more shoulder mobility another way you can do this is if you think about the movements you're using in the warm-up so let's say you're using you want to warm up your hamstrings or you want to groove your hip hinge pattern now you might just use a dowel rod hip hinge which is very simple and there's minimal load or you could use something like a kettlebell RDL. Now, for some people, that kettlebell RDL, depending on the weight, might be a strength exercise, but um, for others, it might be a mobility exercise. Now, for example, when I'm training for a competition, I will, let's say, on the move of the session, I'm going to be doing RDLs. I may well just warm up with a lighter version of the weight, so I may just stick 25 kilo plates on and to warm up for my heavy RDLs, I just use lighter RDLs. Now that to somebody else might be a strength exercise. Equally, if you look at something like an RDL where the bar is close to your thighs or your quads versus say a good morning where it's on your back, the distance in between at the end of that hip hinge pattern and where the um, where the stretch is being placed is bigger for something like a good morning than an RDL. This means you're going to get a greater stretch doing something like a good morning versus an RDL. So if your hamstring and calf mobility is reasonably okay, then you can bump it up a little bit further by doing a good morning. Equally, you can elevate your uh, toes on some plates to get an added stretch at the calf and hamstring. That's something to think about because if you're doing the same warm up every single time, and you're at least investing in that process. Yes, there's some psychological benefits for doing the same thing every time, but if you're gonna train for a long time, let's say weeks, months, years, then you want to know that your time invested is gonna be giving you more and more rewards the more often you do it and the longer you spend on it. We don't wanna spend ages on one thing just to stay the same level. 